Ingram, who's a former senior intelligence officer in the British Army and has worked extensively with the Joint Chemical, Biological, Radiation and Nuclear Regiment. Uh, he's in our Birmingham studio. Uh, thank you for being with us. What, what do you think these 180 military personnel really have been called in to do? What, what, what is going to be their role? Well, they're, they're specialists in this, so they're in to provide aid to the civil powers. They're trained in finding any hotspots where the chemical could be contaminating and making those safe for the general public um, and uh, gathering evidence in such a way that it can then go and be used to try and pinpoint who is actually responsible for this. What, what are your thoughts about this nerve agent? Uh, do you have any idea, for example, how it was used in this apparent attack on, on the former... Russian spy and his daughter. There's so many ways it, it could be used. You know, the classic was the same way that uh, Kim Jong uh, Un's uh, half brother, Kim Jong Nam, was assassinated in Kuala Lumpur Airport um, uh, last year, where uh, an, a contaminated wipe was put across his face by two women in the airport. It can be administered that easily. So you only need a very tiny amount on the skin, is that right? Oh, very, very tiny amounts. And um, you know, the government was very quick to come out and say this is a nerve agent. They've said it's a, a very rare nerve agent, which, which would suggest it's, you know, there's, there's not that many groups that are there. Um, uh, it, it, there. There are some thickened agents that are safer for assassins to use, but are very, very potent. And a very small amount on the skin would be more than enough to cause the symptoms that we've seen. And is it your view that a nerve agent like this can only be produced by, you know, a country's military apparatus? Or, or could it be, for example, a, some sort of mafia organisation? It's very difficult for a mafia-type organisation to produce these. Now, uh, we've seen their use in Syria. Uh, we don't know how the stocks um, that uh, Saddam Hussein had, what happened to them. We don't know how the stocks that uh, were in areas of potentially Ukraine uh, that, that have fallen under rebel control have gone to. So there's a possibility that criminal groups or um, terrorist organisations could get hold of this. But I think it's highly unlikely. It's, it's more likely to be something that um, has been state-initiated. I mean, bluntly, as an expert in this field, do you think this is something produced by the Russian military? I, I think all the evidence at the moment, um, you know, if I was making a, a, a formal assessment, would point to that direction. Uh, you know, it's achieving two things. It's allowing um, the, uh, President Putin, if he's ordered it, to make a very clear statement to his enemies saying that you know, he can go out and do something willy-nilly uh, where he wants to, and in a very public way, and is putting um, a very clear statement out to the West in the way he's done with the deployment of his military forces uh, through the English Channel, flying aircraft at the UK, um, and what he's done in Syria, and his refusal to accept United Nations Security Council resolutions. You know, he's... he's um, uh, basically telling the West he can uh, operate with impunity where he wants to. What's the most likely way, in your view, it could have been used to attack uh, Mr Skripal and, and his daughter? Would, would it have been put in their food, for example? There's one theory that um, Mr Skripal's daughter might have unwittingly brought it across from Russia. Uh, that's, that's highly unlikely. Um, you, you know, there are possibilities. Um, I think the most likely route is that um, someone at some stage during his uh, walk through Salisbury that, that evening um, has brushed past him and wiped this on his skin. Um, that's, that's what I'd be looking at as the most likely route. He could have been given something um, that he opened that had already been contaminated. But again, it acts fairly quickly. Um, and it only requires the tiniest of doses. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I would want to suggest that it's someone who's gone past him and, and, and wiped him uh, with this material. Um, and just in terms of the casualties, we know that Mr Skripal and his daughter Yulia are both still critically ill and, and the officer, the police officer, um, is serious but stable. Is it possible to survive um, one of these attacks you know, if, if, if you have had quite a lot of the nerve agent put onto your skin? Uh, you know, that, that's uh, how long is a piece of string question. It all depends on uh, how much of, of a dose that they've received on how quick the hospital can administer some of the antidotes. And the antidotes are you know, fairly common drugs that exist in all accident emergencies because they're used for so many other things. Um, and if he was going to have uh, this sort of attack, he's closest to the, spe the, the best specialist in the country. Very good to talk to you, and thank you for all your uh, expert analysis there. Philip Ingram, their former senior intelligence officer in the British Army.